I handed them my phone reluctantly, and then the guy who was stood behind just literally just came in and whacked me across the <laughs> face, absolutely battered me. Like, I was just like, sat there, and I was like, right. But I want to talk to you about the, the whole kung fu experience, because I find, I'm not going to lie to you, mate, I find it fucking hilarious how you've done kung fu. <laughs> just kung fu, just when I think of kung fu, I just think of pandas. Well, well fucking, <laughs> Edie was so confused because she was like, who the fuck shoes are these? And he went, they're my kung fu shoes! <laughs> and she was like... <laughs> so just start flying, st- levitating towards them. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. So how, you went to China, am I right in saying that? I went to China twice, yeah. And what was that about? What master. was that about? Should <laughs> I should I, was should I start about? from the beginning about kung fu? Be- yeah, before you before yes. you start, was right. it like Jaden Smith? Oh. I love that movie. Oh, I love that movie. Is it that was, what you not like was it based that, on you? No, I started before. It's based on it was better. Yes, I am actually. Yes, a, a, yes, I'm. <laughs> yes, I'm Will, I'm Will Smith's son. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sorry, mate, I cut you off. It's okay. Do you want to start with? I can start from the beginning. Um, basically, like growing up and stuff. Um, I used to play football quite a bit, but didn't really get on with like the football team and stuff. But that was like from the age of seven, like at my first school that I went to. Um, and then like, I was at a school called Snaresbrook. It was like a state school. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, after there, I went to a private school from the age of seven because um, my mum wanted me to go there so I could get into Forest, which is where my dad went. Um, and I didn't know my dad, but she just still, for some reason, wanted me to follow in his footsteps. But um, <laughs> following his footsteps, where's he going? Uh, away from his children. <laughs> you don't know um, where his footsteps were. <laughs> um, You'll not know. You'd be, you'd be going a long way if you were following his footsteps, mate. <laughs> For sure, I will. You'd have um, to find the footsteps first. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so um, I, I was just like I, I've always felt like as soon as I went to my first private school, I felt quite like out of place. Um, before I went to Forest and Forest, I started to, to like find my my like kind of like level. But I still, when I was playing football, didn't get on with the team. I was on the cuff of the B team. I was like B team captain and popular there, but then A team shit and no one liked me. So it was a bit like fuck. This is a bit dead. King of the B's, uh, slave yeah. of the A's, slave of the A's. Yes, it's quite nice. Yes. Um, anyway, so I think when I was about uh, twelve, thirteen, um, I well, I was thirteen actually. Um, I was walking home from school. Um, and then I took the wrong bus because I'm a, I'm a twat. Um, so the 66, which goes down Wanstead, goes towards Romford as opposed to dropping me outside the green, which is where I was, where I grew up. Um, and 66 turns left and goes down to uh, the motorway, whatever. I got off the bus and I saw these two people like, on the top of a bridge. And I, you know when you get like that kind of like, oh, God, feeling? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You've seen and two you, ninjas I, and you went, fuck. Yes. Well, they were wearing balaclavas, but... Um, right. Yeah. So, so they, they were really prepared. They were really prepared for COVID. Um, yeah, they saw the curve the early. Oh, they saw the curve, yeah. They're, I hope you're dead. Um, anyway, um, so I, was walking, I was walking underneath and, and for some reason I had a really weird feeling in my stomach, but I thought maybe they're going to just drop something like on my head, like water. A mixed tape. Or something, yeah. Or, or a mixed tape, yes. Yeah, they were drillers. Um, anyway... Well, he came down the bridge and then just uh, pushed me around a bit and they were just like, give me all your shit. And I was just like, don't have anything. And they was like... <laughs> How old were they, do you think? Nah, I must be like 17 or something. Well, you were 12. Mm-hmm. Wow, um, you're hard. Yeah. Um, and then... They were like, it was kind of scary. I thought I was terrified, but um, I didn't really know how to defend myself. They were like taller than me and bigger than me, and there's two of them. Uh, and they were like pushing me like over the barriers when the cars were going past. So I was a bit like, fuck, this is a bit fucking terrifying, not gonna lie. I said, please, like, don't hurt me. I don't know what you want from me. And they just said, give me all your shit. Drag me into some. What, your mask book? Yes, give me your maths book. I need to pass my A levels. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just don't get Pythagorean. <laughs> um, yeah, and then they dragged me into the, the garden, which someone's garden, someone's a prick. They didn't want to come out into their front garden and help me out. But, yeah. <laughs> they actually come out the front door and start battering you as well. Yeah, they actually pissed on my face after. That's where my <laughs> piss kink is now. Um, no, they dragged me into the garden uh, and then they pushed me on the floor. I was on the floor and they said, give us your, fo- like, give us your fucking phone. And like, I was just like, fine. Very gutted because I had a Samsung taco and like, oh, I love that phone. Oh, taco light like, or just normal just taco? I, thought, I, think, I think it's just a taco. Just when I thought this story couldn't get worse. I thought, I thought it, was taco. Uh, it was a taco to me. It was, oh. it was, a, it was a nice snack. But anyway, um, so I handed them my phone reluctantly and then the guy who was stood behind just literally just came in and whacked me across the face. <laughs> absolutely battered me like, I was just like sat there and I was like right so I was crying but I stood up and I was like following them to see if I could find them but I was also scared I didn't want to keep following them um, went home and I was a bit like I don't ever want this to happen to me again um, what happened like did your mum my mum was obviously gutted like she you don't want everyone to see your kid like 
my mum and I are very close. Um, but she obviously called the police, and then nothing ever happened, obviously. But uh, I couldn't eat for like three days because my jaw had like swollen up from like where it hit me. Um, and yeah, anyway, so long story short, that happened, and I was just a bit like, I don't want, I don't want this to happen again. So I was just looking into martial arts stuff so I could defend myself, and then that's where I started doing so, Kung Fu. Sounds a lot like the plot of Kung Fu Panda. Yes, I actually ended up becoming a big black and white, black and white panda. Panda, that's panda. the thing. I don't know why I had panda to go with black and, and white, white again. And yeah. black and white. Black and, and white and, and white. black and white. And so, white. Yeah. so where did and you black. go at the start? So um, I stayed with the same, like, school um the whole way but they started uh, in romford at the fitness first there so mm. i used to go once a week um and then when they got their own school which is a few months later uh, that was then in elton so it's not too far from here it's probably about 20 minute drive or something um 30 minutes um and then i soon started to train twice a week three times a week up until i think a year and a half in i was training six days a week uh, i got quite well i was very addicted to it um and then started to do like competitions uh, so there's two things basically with kung fu. You've got forms, which is where I was national and international champion, Ooh. and then there was fighting, which is what I started to get into a lot more. It's called sandara sancha. Um, so for me, for kung fu, um, it's essentially kung fu. Shaolin kung fu is just forms. It's like conditioning your body, flexibility, and forms. And forms are are ab- like applicable to fighting. But you don't, you know, when people are like, ah, ah, all the forms, you don't actually fight like that. It's just literally yeah. just to try and like <sighs> drone my night. I know, right? Like yeah. a performance. It's like it's like a performance. I, I had to do it for karate because I was two belts away from black in karate. Nice. I got to brown and white, and all I had to do was just do like a little performance. Well, like a and samba. Like, the thing like was, cut, you're with everyone else. Cutters, you know, just yeah, to do yeah, mini rocks. Yeah, 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 but I had to do them, so I was just. And obviously, I just copied the person in front of me, so I didn't, it's not like yeah. I had to prepare to. So I got—I I pretty much shit house my way to brown and white belt on karate. And yeah. I'm looking at me painted nails, so <laughs> continue. Yeah, that's all right. Um, so I started to fight uh, a little bit before I stopped doing kung fu, but that's like another story. But um, yeah, essentially, like I was training a lot. I was teaching kids uh, how to do kung fu, um, and I was just kind of like just dedicating my life to that, pretty much. Um, so, and yeah how did China come it. about so China was when I was the first time I went I think I was 16 and we went to Shaolin Temple to train um, so essentially loads of people around the world they're like oh you went and trained at the temple no one trains at the temple like you go to the temple you can get access because it's a tourist site is that just um, where Jaden Smith trains no he actually didn't it was uh, I think that was in Wudang Wuhan um, Wu- no, no, no. So what we're saying no, is no. Charlie Rocks were started the coronavirus, yes, guys. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I think that that wasn't necessarily just at the Shaolin Temple. They filmed a little bit there, and then there was one at another temple. But, um, yeah, you, there's loads of different schools that are around. So I trained at one of the local schools, like, around there. That must have been fucking mint. It was, it was very fun. So basically the, the day consists of, it was, it was so strenuous. Like, you'd wake up at 5 a.m., um, and you go down and you do like some drills, so it's like stretching, forms, whatever like that. Uh, very, very like brief, just basically getting ready. Uh, then you go for a run up the mountain. So you run up the mountain um, and you come back down. Once you come back down, you have breakfast and then it's like a break for a couple of hours. Mm-hmm. Then you train again um, and then you have a break and then you train again. So you train three times a day um, and then you end at about... 8 p.m., 9 p.m. Is there anything like people, I'm trying to think of like little insights or anything that people like, is quite interesting for people to know about, like the lifestyle or anything like, do you have to wake up early? Or? Yeah, so like obviously you wake up at five, um, but the diet's fucked. Like the fi- the diet's what's really, really like gets to you. Like if you take for granted, like if you're trying to get big in the UK or something, like when I was doing my gym stuff, obviously lightweights, you could probably relate to it. You can literally just go to Tesco, pick up any food you want. When you're at the, Sha- at the Shaolin Temple schools, um, your diet is literally veg and rice. There's no protein. No meals for camp. Bro, no meals for camp. But the only protein you get is from eggs because everything's literally... The schools have their own little farms that are there. Oh, shit. It, it's like, it's all self-sustainable and if they need anything, then they'll go into town and then they'll get it. Uh, it, it, it it's, so, it's so, like, agricultural and primitive, but it's it's very humbling. What what was this, like, the sense is, like... Really cool. Like, they were really quite... Probably because I'm white. I'm not going to lie, they, they were nicer to me than they were to the little Chinese you, kids. You, <laughs> you get more of a white kid. Yeah, you do, yeah, oh, yeah, there's yeah. a really funny photo, uh, Cal put it on the screen, Charlie was sent it to you, where it's just 
Charlie with loads of little Chinese kids and him just right in the middle. Looking they love like me, man. Now. They <laughs> love me. I, I love those kids. They were fucking so sick. I actually wonder. I think there was Wei Fung. That was, that was one kid. It was Wei Fung. Yeah, who was your, no, who was your one, of the, one of the uh-huh. kids was called Wei Fung. Mm. Uh, I, I really liked him. It was a lot of fun. Wei Fung, F U N G. Who was your best mate there? That's it. Well, I went with people who I was training with. So it was like me and the other boys that were there. Um, funny story Studio 338. Um, my friend, uh, well, one of the other kids who I was training with, and he's there, his dad owns it. What so, did you do three for you? So yeah. I will, we'll go there after lockdown. I'll take you. It's, it's, it's good. It's a good what, time. What was that? So it's, it's a club right by oh. the O2. Ah. So, what? so we've gone from uh, yeah. a primitive diet and stretching to pills and ket. Mm. Mm. Well, what was we the, don't. What was the purpose of uh, going there? Was it to, to, to live and breathe the lifestyle of a monk? Yeah, so... <laughs> Why did you do that? Live and breathe the lifestyle of a monk. No, the f- the first time we went there was um, essentially just uh, to like, literally, like you said, it's like to get like cultural experience and understand what it is. Because when you come back, then you're like proper on it as well. It keeps you motivated because mm-hmm. you're like, well, we've got all of these facilities and we're not making the most of it, so we should train harder, and we do. Um, but uh, the second time I went was to compete. So it was the International Wushu Festival. So. I competed for that. Um, so we did one week at the competition and then one week training after. So the we competed and that was like, I think it was the ninth International Wushu Festival, I think. But I was the first Brit that ever got a gold medal at that thing. That yes, was, that my cool. G. Yeah, that was, that was interesting. Love he, was, that. he was also the only Brit that was there. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't. There was a, another team that went before us um, and then... Out of my team, I think there were six or seven of us competing. I was the only one that got gold. Love that from you, Danielson. I, I had to take. <laughs> thank you, Danielson. <laughs> thank you. Um, I had to take the school to court though to get my uh, certificate back because they tried to nab my certificate off me. Really? Yeah, cunts. Why did they do that? Um, obviously, I was going to private school, um, so my dad was spending a lot of money, um, and then the school themselves were very. Uh, I was the one, only one who got a gold medal, and mm-hmm. I was also one of the disciples. So there were four of us that were like disciples. Disciples? Yeah. What, like fucking Jesus? But yes. Yes. The fucking Last much. Supper, race and veg. Pretty much how it works, yeah, is that um, with Kung Fu, is like if you're, uh, if you're like, a, like a master or something like that that's come from like Shaolin Temple, you're like a certain generation from the conception of like mm-hmm. masters and shit like that's come from the Shaolin Temple. So I was a 35th generation, and my master was a 34th generation, so my name was Shi Hong Chong. And the, uh, Shi Hong Chong? Shi Hong Chong. I'm going to stop Chong. calling you that now. Yeah, call me Chong. It's wise. That's the title of the, of the, the podcast, Shi Hong uh, Chong. Anyway. It's ASP so, 26. So, <laughs> Chong. so um, obviously, my dad was paying a lot of money for me to go to school, uh, but in the return from China, they were still wanting me to train, like, six days a week, mm-hmm. and doing A-levels and that, it fucked me, like hard like I just couldn't study like I was literally going I was coming back home at like 1am and getting up for school at 7am 